right, welcome to Gearbox Talk, brought to you by Go Wild. This show is dedicated to how-tos, answering questions, and all that good stuff about outdoor gear. I'm your host, Brad Luttrell. I'm a co-founder of Go Wild, and we're a social media platform for outdoor enthusiasts. Now, our platform was designed to, to really connect each other around our outdoor pursuits and our passions. And Gearbox was designed to answer questions to help you get better at those outdoor pursuits. So they go really well hand in hand. All right, for today, for Gearbox Talk, we're talking to public land and saddle hunter Parker McDonald. Now, I love this guy, and over the last few years, he's taken more than a dozen whitetail deer on public land using a kayak. That is, he his mode of transportation to get to this access on public land is a kayak, and then he packs the, the deer out on a kayak. And in order to do that, Parker has to have a really compact setup. He's got to be very mobile, and it's really interesting to me uh, the gear that Parker's using to do this. So Parker's going to walk us through in exact detail what he is using to have that success. And he's going to tell you about the products you need, and he's going to tell you about a few that you shouldn't buy. And quite frankly, if you're looking at getting into saddle hunting, which I imagine you might be, or if you're just interested, we're going to save you hundreds of dollars on this episode. Parker's tips on sticks alone are worth a ton of money, so make sure you stick around to hear that. All right, I want to uh, I want to remind you all the things that Parker is going to talk about, we've linked to in the show notes, and all, all that gear that's linked through there, if you purchase gear through those links... A, you're supporting Go Wild. We make money from that. We make a commission. But we donate 1% of our proceeds from that to outdoor nonprofits. So if you want to support the show but also want to donate to nonprofits in the outdoor space, that's a cool way to do it. You can go in, buy anything that we talk about through these links, and we make money, and we'll donate 1% of our proceeds. All right. If you like hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, barbecuing, and so on and so on, please subscribe. Let's take a moment to do that right now, just so you don't miss out on future episodes where you could save money and you could learn. So if you're YouTubers, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications. Podcasters, you know what to do on your own platform. It's really quite simple. If you want to suck less, subscribe to Gearbox Talk. All right, it's time for Gearbox Talk with Parker McDonald. Parker, man, welcome to Gearbox Talk, a show where we talk about nothing but gear. How's it going? It's going awesome, man. Doing great. I like, I like that background you got there. You got like a, is that like a metal cut uh, version of your oh, logo? Yeah. Dude, you're fancy now. I literally just got it put up yesterday. Nice. I so like it. I've got my whole office. This was just like a catch all like junk room. Yeah. And so I created a whole studio in here. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty freaking cool. <laughs> like, it, looks it looks really cool, good. It looks cool. So I, uh, I people are probably with with this show. I've been bouncing all over the place. I've recorded some in a bedroom in my house. I recorded <laughs> some downstairs in our entryway, and today I'm in our conference room. That and, looks great. Yeah, and it's uh, that's actually uh, a ten point I I got in. Uh, you see the Kentucky? You see the Kentucky? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it now. Yeah, I I thought that was pretty cool. One of the Go Wild users, uh, my buddy Mike Larson, um, made that for me for that deer. So that's cool, man. But I'm in our conference room because we're building a studio as well, so I, I can I can relate. Hey, man, tell people who you are and what you do because you have a really cool story, and uh, there's a reason you have this cool logo. It's because you have this awesome platform where you're telling people you're sharing your story of public land hunting, and I've been following along with you for a couple of years now, and. You're one of my favorite content creators. Like I, I think you, you know, so many people try to do what other people are doing, and you know, it's not that you're trying to be different. It's just like what you're doing is very different. So tell us about it. Yeah. So, uh, like you said, my name is Parker McDonald, and I uh, own the Southern Ground Hunting brand, which is that logo right there. And uh, I'm very proud of that. I might mention that several <laughs> times because I'm like, I don't know if you saw this crazy awesome logo back here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and pretty much what we do, we started out as a podcast and that was where, um, I got connected with you and, um, fairly randomly got connected with you. Like we have a mutual friend and just weird things. Uh, one of the guy who was my co-host at the time happened to be cutting the lawn of one of the guys who helped with go wild and (laughs) they connected that way. It was just really strange how it all worked out. Um, uh, so we started out at this po- as a podcast, and then we ventured into YouTube, and pretty much do everything on both of those platforms. Um, the podcast we share a lot of people's stories, so we share different people, we interview guests, and things like that. On the YouTube channel, we're pretty much documenting the stories that are happening right here. You know, like I'm I'm in Alabama. Um, everything we do is based out of the South, and so um, I'm hunting public land in the South. But the thing that I think probably you were getting at that I do a little bit different than everybody else is I access, I mean, I would say I access public land probably 90, 98% by kayak. So I'm very rarely in the last, uh, in the last four years, I think I've killed, I think I've killed one deer not using a kayak. And that was in Kentucky where there's deer running everywhere. So, uh, (laughs) you were out, yeah, you were out in Western Kentucky when you came up, right? Yeah. And I did use my kayak. I use my kayak a lot in Kentucky. Um, but just happened to walk into a soybean field one day and, um, I was tired. I was covered in poison Ivy and I was like, yeah, I'm not kayaking today. I'm just going to walk somewhere. And I ended up shooting a buck that day. So, um, that's the only deer I've killed in the last like four years that wasn't using a kayak, I think. And Um, and so some people, some people would wonder like how many deer have you taken? Cause that statement, we don't know how many, but I know it's a lot. How many deer have you taken with your kayak? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, yeah. And since I started doing it in the last, I've got three seasons under my belt of using the kayak. Let me, is it three? Yeah. Three seasons and I've killed 15. Yeah. Which um, is a lot for, for most guys. Like most yeah, people hope yeah. to get a deer a season and I see you like in deer season. I'm like, Oh, Parker got another deer. <laughs> yeah. Cause Al- well, what's, what are Alabama's? Well, I know you're not just, uh, hunting Alabama, but you've got, um, a little bit more, uh, the, the tag limits are higher down there. Yes. Yeah. We can kill three bucks a yeah. year in Alabama. And, um, if you're hunting with archery equipment, so if you're bow hunting, you can shoot a doe every single day of the season. Yeah. Um, now I do both. I hunt with a gun and I hunt with a bow. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it's pretty liberal when it comes to does. Now that being said, it used to be that you could kill a buck and a doe every single day it's crazy. <laughs> of the season. Yeah. And, and our season, our season's stupid long too. Like we open, uh, like October the 15th, somewhere around that area every year. Yeah. And, um, end on February 10th. Yeah. Dude, Kentucky and, opens up now. Uh, well, it, it's always opened up early September for archery. So you can get a nice velvet, but then it runs to the end of January now. So we've got a mm-hmm. really wide range too. You do. You do have a long season. I've actually hunted Kentucky on the, in January a couple of years ago. And, uh, it was, I mean, it's great. I love going to Kentucky, especially whenever it's not 90 degrees outside. Yeah, and that's tough about the September season, man. It's so humid and hot. Like that's dove weather with like people think of ice cold beers and hanging out in short sleeves, you know? Yeah. I mean, open a day of, uh, Kentucky season, I guess it was this year or last year. I was hunting public land, um, early September, first weekend of September. And I mean, there were dove hunters blasting everywhere. Oh yeah, man. Out West, all those cornfields and everything. I bet bet they're all over it. I haven't hunted doves out there. I haven't hunted out West at all. I've hunted, um, I'm, I'm from Southeastern Kentucky, which is total opposite on the population. It's actually much, much fewer deer out there, uh, which is also cool. It's, uh, it's a cool area though. It's more mountainous and that's where our elk population is. Yeah. So, but it's totally different from where you've hunted out there. So th- what I what I think is cool about your story, like you just kind of threw it out there, like you're traveling by boat a lot, and mm-hmm. I think a lot of whitetail hunters, man, um, tree stand hunters in particular, we, we we move with a lot of gear, right? Like there's a lot of stuff. People go up, they get comfortable, and you know up here it's maybe we don't have as many of the shooting house setups, but like you go, you talk about Texas, and I mean you're almost hunting from a living room in some of these nice shooting houses that these guys have, yeah, and it's a totally different setup. So today we're gonna talk about what you're using to be so mobile. So, so people might say, I don't know, kayak hunting is not for me, but what I will say is that 
for you to be able to pack in all that gear into a kayak and be able to pull out a, you got to have room for a deer to come back with you. And right. it's a very lightweight setup, which is why I wanted to have you on as one of the first guys on Gearbox talk to come on and talk about your setup. Cause it's, it has to be thought out by design and you mm -hmm. have to be lightweight by design and it, it's got to be portable. And so, you know, last year I did, I've hunted public land a good bit from back home in Southeast Kentucky, but last year I did my first like hike in multiple miles and, and, you know, did all my scouting and more of a, it was almost like a more adventure Western hunt style. And, um, I, I do not have the gear for that. Like I, I, I kind of learned that I was not set up to do what you're doing. So I'm excited about this conversation in general. That was during gun season and, um, I'm not hunting a saddle, so I'm excited to talk to you about that. You know, I, I'm excited to hear about your platform that you're using and, uh, you know, uh, every, everything else. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about your boat last, but let's, let's kind of dive in. If, if you're ready to, to yeah. talk through some of your gear, man, what are first let's like, let's lay out to somebody that's because saddle hunting, it's not that it's new, but it's really picked up over the last, I don't know, a couple years. Mm -hmm. And for anybody that uh, doesn't, know what we're talking about talk a little bit just about the advantages of saddle hunting and why you've chosen to do that yeah so it's actually pretty funny that you mentioned texas so i'm from there i was born and raised in west texas and we uh i mean i grew up with shooting houses like <laughs> big giant box blinds yeah. with heat you know heaters and feeders that are like you know 20 yards away for yeah. both set up like you just that's what I've, that's what I was raised doing. I, I didn't know anything different until I was crap 20 years old, you know, yeah. um, I'm 29 now. And so like, that's what I always did growing up. And, um, for me, because in, in Texas deer hunting is like a rich man's sport. So it's, you really have to have a lot of money or know somebody with a lot of money to hunt deer in leases Texas. are so expensive yeah man i mean it's crazy and so when i moved to alabama i was like well i gotta get on a lease i gotta get on a club i can't hunt public land that's for poor people <laughs> um you know i think the biggest problem uh of of like the biggest problem with humans is that sometimes we're not self-aware and like i'm like those are that's for poor people well i is poor so like <laughs> <laughs> it just worked out uh, I got tired. So I, when I first moved here, I started hunting, you know, uh, a lease and then I wasn't seeing deer. I wasn't killing deer. And I was like, well, crap, I'm just going to start hunting public land. Cause I can, I can just not pay yeah. to not see deer <laughs> if I'm not going to see deer anyways. <laughs> like I just, whatever. What I didn't realize is I was actually going to be a lot more successful, um, on public than I've ever been on private. So, um, that's, that comes down to like, a few things, not a whole lot of things. I'm very simple when it comes to my gear and my setup. And I think simple is the best because, um, I talk to my friends all the time about this systems are everything when it comes to mobile hunting, you want to, I see guys who are trading and buying gear all the time right. and they never get comfortable with their stuff. And so they're always, there's always a learning curve. They've never developed a system that is just like muscle memory. I can do my whole system in the dark, man. Like yeah. without a flashlight, I can do everything, camera set up, saddle set up, everything. And so before we get into all that stuff, that's a really important part is developing your system. Whatever it is, you're going to be more effective if you'll just develop it. If, if you're using a climber, that's fine. Just have your system. Like, And you mentioned something I'll call out, like doing it in the dark whenever possible is so important. I, I rolled up on first day of gun this year. And, uh, there was a miscommunication on the property and there was a dude setting up a mile away from where my, in my tree stand where I was going to hunt. And I'm saying mine, it's not my property. I, I it was a, it's a pr property I have permission to hunt, but there was miscommunication and there was somebody already setting up and I could see him a mile away from, from where I sat. Now it's an open clear cut field and through some trees, but if I can see it, deer can see it, man. Like that's oh, yeah. great point on, on being stealthy. Yeah, you got to be stealthy and you got to be comfortable, man. Like none of this stuff is going to work if if you're just constantly buying new things and never being happy with one thing. I mean, everything's not nothing's perfect. Right. Everything has room for improvement. It just depends on, you know, what what you value. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up this is this is a Mantis saddle from Tethered. So, this is basically for guys who have never seen it this is my tree stand. 
Um, and this is actually not the one I've never hunted out of this one. I traded, uh, a large for an XL because I thought my dad was going to use this one. Yeah. Um, and he ended up, I ended up giving him a different one. He liked a different one better. So right now I have an XL saddle that looks gigantic. Um, <laughs> but that's, that is, that is my tree stand. That's everything that I, almost everything that I need to be able to sit in a tree. And I mean, you can tell just by design, it's super simple. Um, to somebody that is new to all of this stuff, maybe they've never heard of this. It might look kind of intimidating with ropes and things, but honestly, like this little loop goes around your leg, that root goes around your other leg. And then you have a waist belt that keeps everything and keeps everything basically on your, on your waist. It's, it's a very simple system. It, it's honestly really similar to like a harness, a tree stand harness. If, if somebody's yeah. familiar with like, if, if, if you've hunted buddy stands or climber stands, you know, you've got your harness system for safety. It's a pretty similar setup. Yeah, it is. And art, like an arborist harness, you mm -hmm. know, um, anything like a lineman, it's all, it's all pretty similar, you know, and that's, that's basically where this method kind of came from. Um, and was de developed from. So that's it. That's the old one. That is that is one that I honestly never used before. And basically, what you're doing is you are putting it around. Your butt's in there. That's tethered to a tree, and you're just sitting like that. If that yep. makes sense. I and, mean, it, and what it does is it allows you to also be able to move around the tree. Versus, yeah. that's what I like. I haven't done it yet. I I need to. But the what I like about it is that you're mobile. So often, man, I get in a, a climber or a buddy stand and you can't move to see what's behind you at all. And, and you're in a position to where, you know, you, you're going to climb up and get around, like looking, looking around the tree, trying to, you're making all kinds of racket on the mm -hmm. metal. And I like the idea of the, the tethered system like you're using. I, I haven't used it yet, but I, the, being, being able to see behind me without causing a ton of movement has a lot of appeal. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's incredibly stealthy, man. Like it's so quiet. I wear mine walking in. Yeah. Um, I, it stays on me from the time I get out of the truck. I, I wear it in the kayak. I wear it all the time. Like I pretty much have that on until I get out of the truck or if I kill an animal and I just want to free up my space a little bit, uh, I'll put it in my bag or whatever, but I mean, ever, it's just so small. Do you ever have any issues with layers like shedding, a, like you want to shed a layer, but you're wearing that thing? Uh, no, I never no. do. And I yeah. can talk about that here in a little bit when we, once we get into like that, like what I'm wearing and stuff like, yeah, yeah we'll cause talk it, about your system in a second. it all, it all works together. Like everything's intentional. Yeah. Um, and so we can, we can definitely talk about that cool. here in a little bit, but that's, that's basically the, that's the older model of saddle. And that's a pretty base. If you were to just buy a Mantis saddle on, uh, tetherednation.com this is what you get. Like that's pretty base basic. Um, this here is a, um, a phantom saddle. And basically the things that make it different are where this, where your tether is right. Or your, this is your bridge that attaches to your tether. That's what's holding you to the tree. Um, you've got these little things right here. They're called comfort channels. You see how that's like notched. Yeah. And that, that basically makes it to where you can, um, you can adjust where the pressure is sitting at uh, on your butt. So you put that through there, you have all different types of settings. So it's, it's pulling pressure from different areas like on your butt and it has that on both sides. Uh, it's very adjustable. This is the one I'm using this year. Um, you got that notch right there. And then also on this bridge, you have an adjustable bridge so I can pull that prussic and adjust the length of the bridge and all that, man. I know for people who are not, uh, not saddle hunters and have never maybe even heard of it. It seems a little bit intimidating, but all that is, is adjustability. There's no right. one right way to do it. Right. It's all, it's all dependent on you. That's why they made it. It's basically so that any guy, if you've never sat in a saddle before, you can go sit in this. This is the Phantom from Tethered. Um, you can go sit in it and you can adjust it all right there. I mean, you have so many adjustment points. Whereas this one, 
the mantis i never found any discomfort in it but you can see that doesn't have right. those notches so it's pretty much wherever it decides to go at and then um what was the, oh the bridge is fixed so mm -hmm. there's no there's no adjustment on that and um so yeah it there's a ton of content on youtube about saddle hunting and how to do it i can't show everything here because right. we're obviously in a studio but um i mean i can tell i can tell you this i've met very few people who have switched to saddle hunting um that didn't stick with it and yeah. usually the people that didn't stick with it are the people that i was talking about that never developed a system and it was always just like chaos yeah um i mean dude i have everything everything in my pouches in my in my dump pouches right here I've got everything in there strategically. Like that's yeah. all part of the system. The stuff at the bottom is the stuff that I'm going to put up last. Yeah. And it's like, that's just, it's like a Turkey hunting vest, man. You got to know where all yeah. your stuff is. You don't want to be making a bunch of racket and trying to find stuff. So that's, yeah. And it, I mean, and it's, it's definitely made me more effective. I think, um, the saddle itself has, because, uh, I was using a Hawk Warbird climber, which was a fairly lightweight climber. Um, but I mean, you're talking about 25 pounds just, and probably more than that. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you've seen, uh, the new, the lightweight, the, I can't remember what the actual name of it is that Hawk just released. I haven't seen their new one. It's like a, it's supposed to be a seven pound, um, stand. I did see, I, uh, yeah, somebody posted about this on go out. I think I saw something about it. Yeah. It's supposed to be a seven pound stand and it says it on the box. And it's like 11 pounds. Like <laughs> they weren't even close. They didn't even, they didn't even come close to their, their weight. Yeah. Um, I've got and, like a, an old, I, I, I need to weigh this thing. Like it's an old one, dude. It's probably 20 years old that I still use. Cause, but I'm most of the time I'm not packing in, um, with that. I usually use it as a, I was like, I'll take it in early season and leave it. Yeah. And preset. It's a preset. And the, Last year, I decided to hunt this spot on public, and I, I carried that thing in like two miles and never again, dude. I don't know how much that thing weighs. I have no idea, but it was miserable, and it's super uncomfortable. It's huge. Now they make them so much smaller, too. The platforms yeah. are much – because you don't I, – I have twice as much space as I need, uh, you know, and it just ends up being but more to clank against. The reality is is you're not going to find something that's going to pack up. No. When you're wearing it, I mean, it's just like small. I wear my harness in right now. You're already yeah. wearing it, so it's it's like you're not even going to notice it. You yeah, know? you're you're not going to find a lighter weight. I mean, people claim like, oh, you know, saddle's not that much lighter than a tree stand. I'm like, it is. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> this <laughs> <It's gotta> saddle, <laughs> this saddle right here, bare, right, just like that. That's 15 ounces. Yeah, freaking 15 ounces. Like you're going to tell me that that's never like it's just unreal. The stuff that people say, the stuff that people say is kind of dumb sometimes, but, uh, and usually it's, it's for lack of not wanting to, uh, um, conform, I guess like saddle yeah, I mean, hunting is kind of a fad. New. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's a bandwagon and some people don't like getting on the bandwagon. And so they'll just come up with random reasons why they shouldn't, but you're not going to find a ladder weight system now from my, for the bow the other advantage is um like my climber rail gets in the way of my bow and because it's a gun system and it, dude I, I i have to set my the top portion of my climber lower with the seat mm -hmm. and then now we're talking about it's not as safe i mean if anybody's ever had the top rail of the climber fall to the bottom when you're 30 feet in the air or however high you get like it freaks you out even if you are strapped in and yeah. uh it's not a fun experience so i like the idea of being able to move and being tethered uh in your seat so you have mobility with the bow you have full movement you know you can you can actually you've got 360 degree yeah of, of shot so basically the way it works is um if i'm if i'm sitting in my saddle right here the tree is right here in front of me um so you're sitting face facing your tree which is awesome a lot of people when i first thought was thinking about it that was a turn off to me um because it's like well how am i going to see well you really have this huge advantage of being able to let the tree um block your movement and um 
And then you right. also – and you're wide open behind you. So that – in my opinion, that's the greatest disadvantage of a saddle is behind you is what's open. So you can't always see your little movements, you know, if you're swinging yeah. or whatever. If there's a deer back there. But I'm always set up to where that wind is right. going to be – going that way so i'm that's gonna be the other thing busted. i like about it man like uh if if you hunt buddy stands or if you have a preset like i use you know that's typically set up and my options like I, i'll pick a stand based on wind but i don't have as many options as you do you can go ahead and pick it any tree you want to and my setup's mm -hmm. already there and, and i'm sure you're going in a lot quieter uh, let's we're going to cover everything that you're using uh we could yeah. get we could go two hours on what we're talking about right now. Yeah. But let's talk about your platform that, okay. that you, you have. I know you got one that you really like that's lightweight and small. So yep. let's show that. Uh, and that, that, that comes into factor two with the, you know, you do need the platform for, for saddle hunting. So I guess when you're comparing tree stand setups, but they're still really small and portable. So, so this is the, uh, let me get it unwrapped here. I had it packed in my bag. It's all good. We'll, we'll run over that. Um, but this is the tethered predator platform. And um, this is the generate. They have Gen 1s and Gen 2s on there. And this is the Gen 2. The Gen 1 actually had some uh, recall issues. Uh, it was their first one. Like, they literally released it. And there was some some issues with the uh, the uh, aluminum on there. But it's been reinforced. So basically, um, it's a, uh, like, what is it? Machined aluminum or whatever. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's that's my whole platform. And people look at it and they're like, man, there's no, there's no way I can stand on that all day. You'd be very surprised at what you can do on this little this little platform this is i mean it's, it's super because comfortable you, unlike standing your all your weight's not necessarily on just that like a tree stand when you're standing right right it's on so, your butt i mean yeah. most of the weight's on your butt and you're either leaning or you're sitting and this is just a place to keep your feet comfortable yeah. Yeah. um so you can it's got the i don't know if you can see yep. those little grips yep it's got the grips the kind of teeth right there it's got the wings that come out that basically make it to where you can push off that side if you're trying to get a real awkward shot around a tree um the, the whole thing is designed to be able to use every every piece every surface on here you can use it and how's um, that latch when it goes around can you show us that portion like as far as around the tree yep yeah i'll try so it's got this little cam strap mm -hmm. um and basically you're going to go around and it's it's got that that's on the other end just like a just like a tree stand and it's going to grow around that little button right there and yep it's Maybe just like that important. and so you'll what you'll do is you'll tighten it you'll tighten it just like that on the tree get it as tight as you can and then just cam it over all right and um, the pressure pulls it down it bites it, man. Those, it it'll That's bite. It's quite like a bit more crazy. stable than a climber, too. Like sometimes the yeah. climbers, man, wobbling around, um, depending on because it it doesn't have that added leverage pressure. You know, I got to the point honestly where I was I was using that climber and I was like, okay, almost everyone I know that has uses a climber for a long period of time um, have had tree stand accidents. Yeah. You know, they've had failure, you know, equipment failure, things like that. I'm like, my time's coming. I spend more time in a tree than most people. Right. My time's going to come. And so I don't feel that way at all now. Like using the saddle, I'm, I'm strapped to the tree the whole time. Like I'm, while I'm climbing, I'm using a lineman's belt. Once I get to my spot, I tether in. I mean, I'm not, I'm not falling out of the tree. I might, I might, you know, slip and, you know, jab myself in the side or something like that but i'm not gonna die right like that that's that's the main thing for me i'm not gonna die i'm probably not gonna break anything um you cannot fall out of a saddle i have flipped upside down in mine um just okay. to try it like i can i can literally flip upside down looking straight at the ground and i'm not you're not gonna fall out wow because uh, your legs are just catching into the mm -hmm. yeah 
it's yeah, amazing. Okay. And so, and it's super safe. And like the, the, the predator platform, honestly, you're not going to find a better platform on the market. Um, they, they put a lot of time tethered does. They put a lot of time, a lot of effort into making sure that it is the best platform that is out there. It's not, it's not going to be, uh, there's no welds on it. So there's mm-hmm. no breaking points like that. The only, the only, uh, I told you there was a recall on the generation one yeah. platform. You got to understand these guys are regular, regular dudes who decided to bite off this to maybe try to pay for an elk hunt one day. <laughs> and like they had no, no intention of it going this big. Well, the first generation on the, uh, this right here, mm-hmm. you see how these, these are, these little cutouts are a lot smaller. Yeah. It's basically reinforced right there because that's where all the pressure comes from when you cam it over okay um so when people when their platforms were breaking they weren't breaking because of they were standing on it usually it was while they were camming that over right. so there wasn't really a safety issue per se because if it cammed over and you stood on it you'd be fine um but if it obviously if it's broken right you'll, you'll that know makes it sense. that makes sense so without the you know, there's also getting up in the tree and, yep. you know, we'll, we'll talk about your, your sticks, you know, typically with a buddy stand, you, you've got a ladder climber stand, you're obviously climbing up, but with this setup, you, you got to get up in the tree a little bit differently. So let's talk a little bit about the gear you're using. And there's been some pretty cool innovations on this side of the house too, uh, over the last couple of years. So I'm excited to see what you're using though. All right. So I use these, uh, the Hawk Heliums. Um, I just told you, I just basically bashed Hawk, but they make a really good climbing stick. Um, these are modified. I modified them my own. These are like, they have two, two steps. I think I mod. I I kind of botched it a little bit, but they're like 21 inches. Um, double, double double-sided steps, the steps fold up, which I really like. Um, and they're, I mean, they're small. These are like right at, right at two pounds maybe a little bit less for each stick um so you're talking i use three of them so you're talking six pounds for all three sticks um so i'm using that i can kind of get into the specifics of it here's the these are the straps that i'm using to strap it to the tree and this is basic these are called uh versa straps and they're from tethered as well okay um and like this whole this whole rope weighs like like half an ounce or something like that, that whole piece. So it's super light. Um, and it's am steel. So it's not breaking. Like it's, yeah, it's stout. Um, and I, it's the same concept as the, as the, um, platform you basically have, I don't know if you can see that, but you have yeah. those little notches. Mm-hmm. Um, and each one is like, uh, a couple inches. Yep. You kind of see it's basically just a daisy chain. Yep like that all through this whole deal. So you can set it on your tree. However big the tree is, you just go inside of that notch. So let's say my tree is right there. I'll slide it in over the, the button. It's actually relatively hard to do when you're not on a tree. Yeah. (laughs) So they get no, nothing to leverage it against. Yeah. And is this going in pretty quiet? Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this nice. that's so most most of these climbing sticks will come with the similar like cam style buckle. Mm-hmm. Um so you'll have metal to metal clanging. Um it's also heavier, like you're not gonna beat half an ounce. These right. things are stupid light. Um but that's that's basically what it's gonna look like. Um now I wanna say uh there are companies right now that are making this style strap come stock with their uh okay. with their stick. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to, don't quote me on it, but I think Lone Wolf Custom Gear is doing something similar to that. But I mean, that's easy enough. And if you have a little bit of wiggle room, you can always turn it and then set it. And then just, I mean, just like any climbing stick, you just make sure you set it and use those standoffs or bite into the tree. And it's, it's pretty killer. So the thing I, the thing I really like about these sticks is that they are, um, they're very packable to me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me wrap this thing up real quick so I can show you what they do. Um, 
I've had these since I started doing this saddle hunting thing. I've been using the Hawk Helium because they're you can get three sticks for like a hundred bucks. Um, and most of the places that are making a stick that's worth a crap are like you're looking at a hundred bucks per stick. Oh, and wow. and you can get your whole setup with Hawk for under a hundred bucks in a lot of a lot of places. So I'll use two of them. So here's two of them put together and you can see that that little uh knob right there is a suction cup. Okay. And uh you can see on the back of this one, uh-huh. That right there, that's the male end. Okay. of the suction cup. So when you put them together, they just pop nice. into place. Nice. That's cool. You got two of them and they're they're good. I use three sticks most of the time. Yeah, and I was going to ask you like for comparison of somebody, what's the max height that you're going with this setup? All right. So that's the next part of the whole deal. So obviously, you got three 21-inch yep. sticks. Congratulations. You can get like 7 feet. Yeah, right. Um so I'm actually using an aider and I'll get that out. Um and I understand people who this may be foreign to a lot of people. Uh, you're looking at me saying that guy's smoking crack <laughs> cause I'm never doing that in the dark. I promise you again, it just all comes back to your system. If you can learn your system, you will, you will enjoy it. I've seen guys doing this stuff that are 300 pounds, you know, like out of shape, but they just know how to do it. So this is a, uh, a five step. It's called an atria uh -huh. from black diamond. And I've got like little water hose to stiffen that up so I can see it, get my foot in there in the dark. But basically what I'm doing is I'm putting my stick up. So just like it's up on a tree and I am putting this aider over that right there. And it basically makes this stick I mean, I'm getting on average, I'm getting about seven foot per stick. Okay. So, so that makes sense. Yeah. So you're installing that and then using the, the aid to, to go on up. You mm -hmm. know. Okay. That makes sense. And when you put, when you start putting pressure on like your whole, you know, if you're a 175, 200 pound person, you put a pressure right there. It ends up making this a lot like a ladder. Right. Like that's all it. This is not anything foreign to like rock climbers and things like that. That's this is what they're using. Um and you really have to like a rock climbing harness is going to be very similar to a saddle and you're using a lot of the same equipment for I mean I never thought as a deer hunter that I would be visiting the REI website right. as much as I do, yeah, but yeah. I mean it's the same equipment. That's the stuff you're using. So, so I want to I want to talk about, um, and I do apologize for booking so tight into your interview here, um, but I want to talk about your pack that you're carrying this stuff in, and you kind of mentioned your apparel uh, that you're yeah. using. So let's so, hit, make sure we have time to hit those two things too. Yeah, let me, um, let me, I'll, I'll show you the pack. Let me get all this stuff. I got, <laughs> it looks just, really clean right here, but right here I just yeah, have a mess of, yeah, it's of like, things. It's all right. I'm not even wearing um, pants, so. <laughs> So, um, this is the pack that I'm running and this is the Eberly stock X2 okay. pack. Um, it's try to get back up. So it's got these wings like this yep. that come out on both sides. My sticks go under there. So I put one stick here and then two sticks stacked right there. Okay. Does that kind of makes sense. Yep. Totally. Then you got this brain right here and there's your main compartment. Yep. I put, SD cards and all kinds of crap up here. It's got the Molly webbing yep. on pretty much the whole thing. You can see it all throughout right there. I keep, you've got these, these packs, which I think are like these pockets are like for a spotting scope or something for yeah. a Western guy. Right. I put camera arm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to get you back on here to talk about self filming sometime. Yeah. I suck at it, but <laughs> <laughs> but I look like I know what I'm doing. Well, so then I'll, like, I got another guy that's going to talk about that. So I'll send you that podcast. <laughs> okay. There's my camera arm that I keep in oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and then most of it's cloth, so it's, it's able to roll up. And, and I guess I'm assuming you're putting that up on top because your whole philosophy is like everything that you need first comes on top. Yeah, so um, it is it is a frame pack, so you can pack out animals with it if you want to. Um, it's got this like uh, – try to show you. You can kind of see that frame Yep. in there right there. It's got that aluminum framing. Um it's a fairly decent sized pack to be honest for for a um a whitetail setup it's it's bigger than what most people would like now for me um I'm filming so I have to have space right uh I have to have that space to be able to um like really be effective I I've tried using smaller packs for simplicity's sake and it just never, it never worked. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't good, but it, I, let me see if I can find, I can't really pack this up um, as good as I want to right now, but I have a picture of everything packed together. Yeah. On my phone. Well, send so, that to me and I'll, I'll pop it up so we can see it. We can do that on the edit and that okay. way people can kind of see it and I'll, I'll be able to make it a little bit bigger than what you'll be able to pull up. Um, yeah, so, I have a. I have a great picture. It shows I have my sticks, my platform, my camera gear, everything packed in to that that pack, and it it's a perfect pack for it. And one thing I was going to ask, so if you're – you obviously have some way that you're I'm, – I'm assuming you have like a bow hook that you're attaching to once you get mm-hmm. up there. So um, kind of similar to, to the same concept on a climber stand. Um, and a lot of people even do that on a buddy stand. Um, buddies are a little nicer if you're like, you can spread out a little bit if you're hunting those by mm-hmm. yourself. But, um, do you, do you find, have you missed any of that? Any of the real estate with, uh, having been able to set anything down or does that hook system work well enough? Oh no, bro. I've got more, I've got more space now. So, um, tethered has a system called the, I think it's the H Y S his strap. And on most public land, you cannot screw into a tree. Yep. Um, so you have to use a strap style of, of hook. I have one and I'm not sure where it is. I, all my stuff is it's all, all over the place, but, um, it's from big white tail dreams is the name of the company. And it's just a gear hanger strap. And it's just a, just another like same similar, like cam, yeah, cam buckle strap. You tighten it up and it's got little hooks that come off of it. It's got like five little hooks that come uh, nice. off of it. All on one one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I put it I put it about like right over head level and I can hang my bow on that next to the tree. Everything is just right there. You have almost like a little yeah. uh, like a little console, I guess, of sorts. And you can do whatever you want to with it, man. I mean like like some guys are like they're hanging a a paracord with a whole bunch of other ropes off of one of those hooks and they're like yeah. have different things hanging down yeah. and like it's just you have so much stuff and it's you all got your right bag there. on one side or are you leaving your bag on the ground so i leave my I, obviously i'm taking my bag up every yeah. single time um and what i do right now is i'm on the fourth arrow base that they use i am there's like a little t hook that comes out of that base and i'm basically using that that little T hook to strap, uh, or to like hang my bag off of, you can see it, that little T hook right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sits like that basically on a tree and I'm hanging my bag right there. Okay. And it it also adds some downward pressure on this to keep it a little more sturdy. Um, and it keeps that big bag out of my way because typically my base for my arm is going to go about waist high. Yeah. And so then my bag is underneath that. So I never have to worry in my shots that my bag is going to be in the way or in my field, uh, long, field of view. How long does it take you to get up in a tree and set up, not, not counting camera equipment, if, for a regular guy, once he got good at the system and learned it, how long does it take you to get up in a tree? Oh, dude, if I don't have thick camera equipment, I can get up in a tree in 10 minutes. Yeah. I can get, I can get 20, 21 foot in 10 minutes. Yeah. And that's with, that's with using the aider and everything. So you can – if you buy just like regular size sticks, I don't because of bulk and weight. That's the reason why I cut them down and using the aider. Uh, but if you're just going to buy regular size sticks and say you're a six foot average height guy, dude, there's no reason you couldn't be ready to hunt in just a few, a few minutes. Uh, it, and it's all dependent on tree, right? So right. 
Um, one of the benefits of the saddle is that you're using, you're able to get into any tree that you want to get into. So if it's branchy or whatever, those are the best ones. So those are going to take a little more time. But if you're hunting like a pine flat or something like that, where you just got, you know, tall, straight climber style trees, yeah. you, can, you can get up there quick, man. All right. So let's talk about your apparel setup. Cause one thing yep. that is always a pain, um, here in Kentucky, and I, I imagine you deal with some of these temperature swings later in the season, you know, but the, it's not crazy to have a 20 degree morning and a, a 60 to 70 degree day. Like it can yeah. happen, right? You, it's crazy swings that we hit. And a lot of times I get, you know, I'm shedding layers and it seems like that would be more difficult in a saddle. Uh, can you talk through your system on your apparel? Yeah. So one of the things this past season that I was, uh, very much, I, I was tired of bulky, right? So like I said, everything that I use is I want to be simple and I want to be effective and I want a system for everything. This is, I'm like literally not this way in any other area of my life other than deer hunting. Like you ask my wife, like freaking systems. No, he ain't got them. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to deer hunting, like I just, I just have them down. And so I was using like under armor stuff and like just the, you know, Walmart stuff. Yeah. But when you're talking about kayaking and hiking and, doing all the saddle Physical. hunting, doing all this stuff. Like a lot of the warmth of that type of stuff is going to come from bulk. Mm -hmm. So there's just big bulky overalls yeah. and coveralls. And, and when you're in a kayak, you're almost, you're, you're it's actually a little more dangerous because you can't like maneuver. Right. You're not as free. Right. So I wanted a system that would be, um, freeing, less bulky and more effective. I want to stay in the tree longer. Um, get there earlier. Yep. Like I want everything to work together. So, um, I started talking with my buddy lock Wheeler, who is a, uh, a rep for a company called scree and scree gear camo. And they, this is basically their, like, uh, this is called the, um, summit pattern. And it's, it's very, it's got that kind of digital look. Yep. See if I can get it closer to yeah, the, we can definitely see it. Um, but this is a this is a merino. This is the first thing uh, I ever bought. Yeah, screen. merino's nice, man. So merino, when you're talking about being effective, um, merino is the most versatile fabric that is currently out there that I know of. Yeah, because like you can wear this in early season, you can wear it in late season. Um, I've got another. This is the 150 uh, 150 merino. I have a 300 set that is a little bit warmer. I literally wore that thing almost all turkey season, which was warm, but because of its moisture wicking ability and the way that it dries so fast, I mean, you you don't feel like you're ever hot, right? right. It's you're, you're not sweating. It's wicking away sweat, um, which is exactly what you want for a public land hunter. It makes you more effective, but also Merino is stupid warm. Like right. for a base layer system, it is so warm. You're not sweating or you're not feeling your sweat. So you're not, it's not freezing you. Right. It's basically, yeah. that's what it is. It's what happens. People get sweaty and then they yep. freeze to death. Like that's just not what you're going to get. So that's the first thing I bought from that, from them. And I bought it before we ever started working with scree. Now we work with scree and, uh, really super believe in the stuff that they've got. And, uh, they're one of our partners, but, um, I paid full price <laughs> for, for my whole yeah, first yeah. set, you know, um, the next thing that I use is their, their hard scrabble set. I just have the tops. I have bottoms for all these as well. Uh, but just for simplicity, and this is basically kind of like your do everything jacket. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a hard, it's called the hard scrabble set. It's uh it's water resistant. It's got a hood on it. It's extremely warm. It's got like a fleece lining yep. inside. Um, that's nice. It, uh, let's see where are they at. It's vented. So you've got a vented armpit, which is great. If let's say, you know, those days you're talking about where it's 20 degrees and then it gets to be 60 degrees, you yeah. can vent that. And most of their pants also have events on the hips, nice. um, which is pretty great. Uh, this is my favorite, probably my favorite thing that I have from Scree okay. because it's just so versatile. I wear this from 40 degrees, you know, I, I'll put it on at probably 40 to 50 degrees and then and lower yeah. like 
I don't have that it's coat, but on. I've got a couple that are similarly made and designed, and it's it's mm-hmm. so nice to have a coat that weight and of that quality that, yeah. that can go a 30-degree swing really easily. And, and, and talking about getting rid of bulk, like you, you have this and maybe even the heavier one on together on a, let's say, let's say it's 20 degrees one morning, which is about as chilly as we're going to get in the South. It can get yeah. a little bit under that, but that's pretty chilly in the South. Um, you have this, the lighter weight, then you have the heavier weight and then you got this on. Yeah. I, I went so many cold mornings just like that. Yeah. And I'm not going to say like I was toasty, right? but I was, I was good. Like I yeah. was good to go. Yeah. And, um, so, and I wasn't sweating, you know, now there are days whenever it's like, Hey, it's going to be 15 degrees all day long. Uh, you know, whatever, sleet, snow, it's just right. going to be cold all day. You get those days like that. And, uh, they also have this puffy. So this is a, um, it's called the ptarmigan uh, puffy jacket, and it's just like any any other of those type yeah. um, puffy jackets. It goes into this tiny little ball. I mean, yeah. you can. Seems it fairly came, it, quiet. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. It came in a ball like that yeah, big nice. whenever I got it, nice. um, and it is like a daggum incinerator inside of it. Like, yeah, I, Dude, so, I just, puffy, sometimes it's critical. I can't wear it sometimes because. <laughs> It just gets too hot, and I'm like, I do like them to take off. I can cram it in my bag, and they they condense down. Though that's, that is a really yeah. good selling point. Um, so man, when you're talking effectiveness, like that whole system right there, it's not just because the pattern looks cool. You know, it, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. You, there's other brands that are. I mean, right. you, you're gonna look at getting this whole system for under a thousand dollars, and there's not a whole lot of brands nah, that man. you can do that with yeah you can get you can get up to a grand buying just the pants mm-hmm. <laughs> the lower half you know oh yeah um, well dude i i hate to to cut you off we didn't even get to talk about your kayak but um uh, i guess that just means i gotta oh, yeah. get you back on here um <laughs> yeah we didn't give us, even talk about it <laughs> i know man but 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 i think we bit off a lot here i think uh, i yeah. underestimated how much we could get into the saddles we spent half an hour on the saddles alone yeah and it was awesome very awesome conversation so let's do the uh the handoff real quick tell people where to find you and find your podcast and your youtube and everything yeah, so uh, we're on every pod, just about every major podcast platform. You search Southern Ground Hunting, you'll, it'll pull up. We're part of the Sportsman's Nation podcast network. Um, so if you're subscribed to that, then you probably already get uh, Southern Ground somewhere. Um, and uh, But we also have our own individual feed there. So you can just search our name on the podcast platform. It'll pull up. Um, you can find us on Facebook, and that's just – uh, facebook.com slash Southern ground hunting on Instagram. It's at Southern ground hunting. And then something new, um, that we're doing right now. Like I'm in the, that's why I'm redoing this whole room is, uh, we were a part of the, the Southern ground hunting brand was a part of the sportsman's nation YouTube channel. And, uh, man, watch that channel grow like crazy. Like it was, it was pretty cool. Um, but I just felt like it was probably the right timing to go ahead and separate from that and do our own channel. Um, we were, I mean, we were driving tons of traffic and it was doing really well. Uh, so it was a hard decision to make, but we have our own channel now on YouTube and, uh, it doesn't have any videos on it yet. I've got like 70 videos that were on that old channel from the past year and a half, uh, that I'm going to be uploading soon. But as soon as I finish this room, we're going to start like just, tearing it up on there right. people may not watch it but they'll at least be there we will link to everything you just said all the gear that parker's talked about will be in the show notes we'll have links to all that and dude i i, I want to get you back on we'll talk about the kayak but i want to talk camera gear because I, I know you're you're not a professional photographer but i do think that that's kind of cool to get a you know a guy who just started doing this and has worked his way through it you've obviously put a lot of thought into your system with what you're working with right now so um i do thank you so much for coming on yeah man thanks for having me i enjoyed it absolutely all right thanks parker yes sir All right. Thank you, Parker. What an awesome show. I really hated to cut this guy off. Please make sure you also check out Parker's content. This guy's an animal when it comes to content from his YouTube stuff to to wherever you're following, podcasts, whatever. Uh, really 
one of my favorite content creators out there. And he actually has one of the most popular podcasts that we see logged on Go Wild. It, uh, it, you know, I see all the time people commenting on his show. I've talked to a lot of people that tell me that it is their favorite show. It's just so unique. And what he does is so cool. Make sure you check out Southern Ground. All right. Re- reminder that all gear that it was mentioned in the show is in the show notes. And I want to remind you of something I said at the beginning, but I'll say it again because it's worth repeating. Purchasing gear through these links, Go Wild gets a commission. So you're support, supporting Go Wild through that. But what that really does and why you should care, because you know who gives a hoot if we make money, right? I mean, you're supporting the show, but at the end of the day, you might not care. Well, what you could care about is that we're donating 1% of our revenues from the the links in the show. We're donating that to support outdoor nonprofits. And in particular right now, we're currently donating to Raise Them Outdoors, which is a really cool camp that teaches kids to hunt, to fish, and to enjoy the outdoors. And, and you know maybe that'll help convince your spouse that you really need to buy that saddle that Parker McDonald just taught you about. I'm just saying it might help. I don't know. All right, if you have questions, I want you to drop those in the comments or when you're logging time on Go Wild, tag me so that we can see it. I love getting feedback on this show. It's It's been really cool to, to see the conversations building and we've already, we're eight episodes in and we've already started to answer some of the questions that are coming in, which is cool. Uh, if you're into these kind of conversations, I'll just remind you, download Go Wild. This th- These kind of conversations are happening every day, every day on that platform. You know, it's downloadgowild.com. The link is in the show notes. But people are talking about these these kind of things with saddles, with tree stands, with packing in and being light and even kayaking. You know, all of this stuff is being discussed on our platform all the time. So I hope to see you there. Uh, when, when you download the show, you'll get a direct message from me within like 24 hours or so. I'll hit you up and ask you how it's going. That one's automated. But the the follow-up, when you say, hey, how's it going, Brad? I found you on Gearbox Talk. That one is not automated. When I come back and say, hey, that's awesome. Thanks for being here. When you, when you get that, please let me know if you have any questions or any... any uh, any comments on, on the Go Wild platform itself? I love hearing from new people, and I would also love to know that you found Go Wild through Gearbox Talk. That'd be really cool, too. All right, I want to give a final shout-out to our team. I do this every show because they work their tails off to make Gearbox Talk happen, and I know that's not necessarily clear from you know the viewer side of how much work goes into these, but from planning out the topics to all the artwork that goes into it to setting up the editing, the posting, and the scheduling and the planning, and it's just it's just a lot of work. And I, the team that does that on the marketing side is so talented and so passionate about what we get to do, and we truly love it. But it's work, and I mean, like we put in a buttload of time into this. So I I, I thank them. Uh, for everything that they do. And I, I thank our engineering team for building a such a cool platform to be able to sh- shop and look at gear such as Gearbox on Go Wild. So final thank you to them. Funny anecdote here, l- a little vignette of what's going on at Go Wild. Uh, some of you have probably noticed that I've been bouncing around from room to room to room and I've yet to make a final home in my studio, which we're building downstairs. Well, to top that off, I'm on the second floor of our office today. It's like 85 and humid as all get out today outside and our AC broke. We came back to our office to find it uh, in a six inch block of ice. So we're getting that fixed. But in the meantime, um, if I look like I'm about to pass out during this script, it's because I'm literally sweating. I'm just like sweating my tail off. Um, I feel like it's one of those crazy unseasonable days that Parker and I talked about where the weather changed dramatically. And it has, cause I had to shut off all the fans to record in our conference room. Cause I don't have a, a, a studio yet. And because we, we our AC units out. So good times, good times, good times indeed. All right, that's it for me today. I got to get out of here before I fall over and pass out. All right, I'm out. <laughs>